Hi, this is the third video in Unit 5. You should have in front of you the guided notes that goes along with it, which is just a PowerPoint with a few things that aren't filled in. All right, so let's look at atomic spectra. First of all, let's review. Why do atoms emit light anyway? Well, it's the electron that is in the atom that becomes excited from a lower energy state to a higher energy state. It's going to absorb a definite amount of energy, a discrete amount of energy. When the electron falls back down to the original energy level, it's going to emit exactly the same amount of energy that was absorbed in moving from that lower energy to the higher energy. So it's the electrons in the atom that are um, changing energy levels, and when they're falling down from a high energy level to a low energy level, that's when light is being emitted, or a photon of energy that falls somewhere in the range of the electromagnetic spectrum. So what are the energy levels, or another word for them are orbits for these electrons? Well, the lowest energy level, or the lowest orbit, is called n is equal to 1. The next energy level, or orbit, is called n is equal to 2. And they just keep going up like that. So electrons can go to a higher energy level by absorbing energy. Okay, absorbing. It takes in energy, and those electrons are promoted to a higher n, a higher orbit. But then when the electrons fall back to a lower energy orbit, they will emit energy. So energy is given off in the form of a photon. If it's in the visible region of the spectrum, so if the wavelength falls in the visible region, we're going to see it as a color of light. All right, so here's just a little um, diagram of this happening. So the little blue dot over here is an electron, and it looks like it's at the energy level n is equal to 5, and it's going to go back down to energy level n is equal to 2, and it emits energy. It emits um, a photon of light. We don't really know the wavelength, but, but for honors students, you're going to learn how to calculate that wavelength. And over here on the right, this red dot would represent an electron in the n is equal to 1 energy level. And that's the lowest energy level for this electron. So it would be called the ground state. And it will absorb some energy. And it's promoted up to a higher energy level. Um, it looks here like it's at n is equal to 3. All right, so here's what's important. Um, energy is emitted when it goes from high energy to low energy. Energy is absorbed when it goes from low energy to high energy. So just some words to remember. OK, so let's practice. So let's see if these transitions will be um, an absorption of energy or an emission of energy. So on your notes, let's write down these answers. So you have an electron. It was in the n is equal to 1 energy level, and it went to the n is equal to 4 energy level. Is that? energy being absorbed or is that energy being emitted? If you said that it's absorbed, you are correct. It goes to a higher energy, so therefore energy had to be absorbed. All right, here we've got an electron in orbit n is equal to 1, and it's going to orbit n is equal to 2. Is the transition, is that representing energy absorption or the emission of energy? Well, the electron is going to a higher energy level, so that, again, is an absorption of energy. Here we've got an electron starting in the energy level n is equal to 3 and going to the energy level of n is equal to 5. Is that absorption or emission of energy? Again, this electron absorbed energy because it went to a higher energy level. So that final state, n is equal to 5, was a higher energy than the initial state where it started at n is equal to 3. How about n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 1? Here, an electron started at a higher energy level and dropped back down to a lower energy level, so that would be an emission of energy. And the last one is an, an electron in energy level 2 going down to an energy level of n is equal to 1. And again, that's going to be an emission of energy because the electron is moving down to a lower energy level. All right, so these are all emission of energy from the hydrogen atom. So here are electrons. You can see that some of them fall from um, 
really high energy levels all the way back down to n is equal to one. Some um, electrons go to the n is equal to two. So not as much energy would be given off in this series. Um, this is the series called the Balmer series. Um, and then some only fall down to the n is equal to three energy level. So that's not as much energy being emitted. Um, so you can see that there are many, many different possibilities for these electronic transitions in the hydrogen atom that has that one electron. And depending how far that electron falls depends on how much energy that photon has that's being emitted. Well, let's talk about the energy spacing of those energy orbits or those energy levels. So. As your n gets bigger, the spacing between the orbits gets smaller and smaller. So the biggest spacing is between the two orbits, n is equal to 1 and n is equal to, to 2. That's the biggest difference in energies. When you get really um, up to large values of n, then the energy levels are so close to one another that you can almost not tell them apart. And so we say that those energy levels form a continuum. They're so close in energy. Here's what I'm talking about. Here's the n is equal to 1 um, orbit, and here is n is equal to 2. That's the biggest jump, 1 to 2. Okay. From 2 to 3, notice that that spacing isn't as great. Um, here we go, n to 2, 2 to n to 3, it's not as great. n to 3, n equals 4, it's getting smaller. And again, we're getting even smaller as we go from 4 to 5. And one more thing, um, as the value of n goes up, so is the distance from the nucleus. So an electron in, in energy level n is equal to 5 would be farther from the nucleus than an electron in energy level n is equal to 2, okay? All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and talk more about the hydrogen atom. In class, we used the spectroscope and we saw spectral lines that had wavelengths um, that were in the visible region. So we saw those nice three colored lines. We saw the red, we saw the teal, and we saw the violet line. However, there are energy transitions within the hydrogen atom that falls outside the visible spectrum. So if you notice over here, the Balmer series is the series that falls in the visible spectrum. It's not important that you know the name Balmer, but it is important that you know that this transition, and, and we'll talk about this and calculate it, um, the energy of these transitions in honors chemistry. But there's also some where more energy is given off than what is in the visible spectrum. And so this would be giving off ultraviolet radiation. Notice that these transitions, they're dropping a, um, a much bigger distance here. So more energy is being emitted than these here in the visible spectrum. And then there are some where the energy that's emitted isn't even as much as that that's being emitted in the visible spectrum. So this would be in the infrared region. Remember, in the electromagnetic spectrum, infrared was lower in energy than the visible. So again, for the hydrogen atom, we have electron transitions that will emit photons of energy in the ultraviolet region, the visible region, which is what we saw, and then in the infrared region. Okay, one more time, those visible lines that we saw with hydrogen um, called the Balmer series, we saw those three colors. And these are from lines that are in starting energy levels of 5, 4, and 3, and they're dropping back to the n is equal to 2 energy level. If you look at your reference sheet in Unit 5, you will see the Bohr model of the atom, and it shows you these transitions for um, the electrons going from higher energy levels to lower energy levels. And it shows you all the transitions, the ones even in the infrared region. Those are the ones with the biggest drop in energy. In the visible spectrum, those are the ones that, ha that are in the intermediate region. And then you'll see some that don't drop um, too far, and those are in the infrared region. All right. Well, if you're in standard chemistry, you are done. I hope you've taken notes on this um, PowerPoint presentation, but honors chemistry, we're going to do some calculations. 
Honors chemistry, folks, we're going to calculate the wavelength of these transitions that these electrons are giving off when they're falling down to a lower energy state. And the equation we're going to use, we talked about in an earlier video, it's called the Rydberg equation. And here it is, 1 over the wavelength of the light that's being given off is equal to the Rydberg constant, which is a capital R, times 1 over n squared, so that's the final destination for the electron, minus 1 over n, n squared i, which is the initial place where the electron started. So the n final is going to be a smaller number than the n initial because remember, we are dropping an energy. So our final energy state is going to be lower than our initial energy state where we started. That's going to be higher. The value of r is 1.097 times 10 to the 7th meters to the negative 1, so inverse meters. All right, it's a plug and chug equation. It can be tricky, though. So I would like you to read this problem. We've got an electron that is transitioning from energy level n is equal to 6 down to energy level n is equal to 2. And I would like you to calculate the wavelength in nanometers of this radiation that's associated with this spectral line. Now, again, this equation is only accurate for the hydrogen atom, that one electron species. Um, so this would be talking about the hydrogen atom where we have an electron in energy level six dropping down to energy level two. I would like you to use the Rydberg equation and calculate the wavelength. So stop the video now, work it out, and see what you get. Once you're done, you can advance and see if you got it right. Well, here's the first part of the answer, and I have the equation, I have the value of R given to you, and again, our final energy level is um, energy level 2, so NF would be 2 squared or 4, and the initial energy um, level, or where we were starting, was an energy level 6, so NI, or the initial energy level squared, would be 6 squared or 36. I just plug those numbers in and I get 1 over the wavelength equaling 2.438 times 10 to the 6th inverse meters. Um, that's 1 over the wavelength. So then if I just want the wavelength, so I take the inverse of that, I get 4.10 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. Not good enough. The question asked for nanometers. And now we're going to do um, the transition um, from meters to nanometers, and we wind up with 410 nanometers. That's a wavelength in the visible spectrum. Remember, the visible spectrum was from about 400 to 700 nanometers. It's a short wavelength in the visible spectrum, and so that's that higher energy in the visible spectrum, so that is the wavelength of that violet line that we saw in hydrogen atom. Okay, well, we're going to practice this equation a little more in class, so I hope you got it right and bring any questions you have to class tomorrow.